Hello, everyone, and welcome to United Way Live United. I'm Terry Westerfield, and joining me today, I have friends in from Via Link 211 and Viet. I'm going to tell you all about this. Let's welcome to the program Lavandra Dobbs, who is the CEO of Via Link. 211. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thanks for having me today. Oh, Lavandra, I'm glad you're here. Always, you have so many good things to share with us. And a first time guest, I want to welcome Lying Lee, who is the program director for the Domestic Violence Program at Viet, which stands for the Vietnamese Initiative and Economic Training. Did I get that right? Yes, Terry. All thank right. you. <laughs> thank you. And also joining us today, my friend, yes, and colleague, Jamie Birchfield, <laughs> who is the marketing director for United Way of Southeast Louisiana. Ladies, I want to thank you for coming today because this is going to be a really interesting conversation, I believe. You often hear us, all our avid listeners, that Via Link is one of United Way of Southeast Louisiana's community impact partners or partner agencies. Now, Via Link provides information and referral through the easy to remember 211 telephone number. And it has a COPE line, which is 1 800 749 2600. Seven, three, and we'll tell you more about that. But Via Link plays an integral role in the statewide Louisiana 211 system. And now let's talk a little bit about Via because here is a program that I was talking a little bit before we started today's show with Lang that sometimes it's almost the silent majority. <laughs> the Vietnamese community is a large community here and it's growing all the time. And in reference to that, I also want to mention APAS because, folks, that stands for the Amazing. Pacific American Society and we just have growing and growing in numbers and we've all become friends neighbors and live here and we kind of take each other for granted or maybe just the opposite we don't know mm -hmm. enough about each mm -hmm. other and that's where all of this is going to come together so let, let's start first Lavandra if you can give us a little refresher course and everybody who's tuned in about the wonderful work of 211 sure um, our call center is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. 211 is your number for health and human service related information. We give you information and referrals. Um, agencies in our database are those that would accept Medicaid, Medicare, um, have no fee, be a nonprofit, or offer services at a sliding scale. Um, 211 would be the number to call if you are looking for shelters, legal aid, uh, a referral for a, a resource on domestic violence, um, food pantries, and, and that sort of thing. And um, you might find it interesting to know that the 211 number and service is available in 90% of the U.S. Our specific center serves a 10 parish area in the greater New Orleans area. And that's a huge swath. It's most of all of Southeast Louisiana, and probably, the, well, it is the most heavily populated as well. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, we also answer calls for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. And your best number for reaching us through that is 1 800 273 TALK. That would, in TALK, would be 8255. And, um, I would like to t distinguish that so, uh, not all 211 centers like us are a blended center that would do crisis and information and referral. And we are so close to Mississippi that has 211 also, and that center does not do crisis. So um, a good rule of thumb is to call 211 for those health and human services related items and use the 800 number for crisis calls. And that is a, an important distinction. But if worse came to worse and someone was confused and dialed 211, could they then be referred to perhaps the other number if they just sure, couldn't remember? absolutely. And that's really a safeguard. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, to me, a lot about it. It, it's, it is that simple, easy to remember number. It's going to connect you to the things you need most. Mm -hmm. And I think of 211, and again, we think of it in crisis situations. Mm -hmm. My goodness, uh, Governor Jindal said that 211 was the go to number during the hurricanes, and we all remember Katrina and Isaac and those in between and after. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's an everyday use. People sometimes think, oh, I can't call. I, I, I don't know about that, but I'm not maybe in crisis yet. But everybody's crisis or crisis level is different. 
Right. And we do, we are all on the same telephony in this state. There are five centers. We can work independently or we can work together. So if there is a disaster, be it a tornado, chemical spill, whatever, whatever area that happens in, we can mobilize and help get coverage for that area and get information out to the public. Now on daily calls, Lavandra, I know that you're always wonderful about uh, sending us information. Can you tell us what some of the top calls that people do use 211 for? Is it is it food? Is it shelter? All the above? Right. Utility assistance, rental assistance, food. Uh, and then about 20% of our calls are crisis related. And what happens when people do call and they say, oh, my goodness, I, 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 I need help with my utilities. I mm -hmm. don't heat. It's, it's a little chilly now, so I don't have anything to deal with the cold or those long summer months when it is just on the press of that heat? Well, one of the first things that the call center counselor will ask you is for your zip code. All of our resources are categorized by, by zip code. Certain parishes have programs that other parishes may not, and then um, certain parishes may service um, programs and other parishes. So having that zip code available is very important. And then the call counselor can tell you what is available to you. Um, sometimes if it's late in the month and you're calling for utility assistance, those funds might be depleted. But um, that always try. I was going to say, because we all know in the nonprofit world how we all partner together and work as a unit whenever we can for to, to really solve the problems of those who do call 211 or call or inquire at our own agencies, there's just not enough financial help for everyone. Sure. And we try to do our very best. And that's why we often partner together. We have that overlap of mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with this partnership, you know, bringing back in APAS, I think it was very important for us for all of the reason, all of the reasons Lavandra was stating that the Asian American community they would love to have access to those resources and to have all of the information that Lavandra was just speaking about, but there's that language barrier and there's just, you know, that fear from that community of not knowing where to get that information, mm -hmm. which is, I think, why this partnership is so important and so just crucial to the community in building that, that relationship with the Asian American society. Right. We have had a language line that offered 152 languages, but we saw the need in um, our, our Vietnamese community here to have an actual person, bilingual person in the um, call center. And we sent out letters for recruitment and we were delighted. We've gotten, uh, we've hired three um, bilingual Vietnamese English speakers that are in training now. And we've gotten two volunteers to assist also. Um, go, oh, please, please, <laughs> yes, 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 I, I want to chime in on that. Um, as Terry indicated that um, APAS, um, <coughs> through the generosity of APAS has donated um, the money through United Way for us to um, hire and get those um, individual trained because um, as indicated, Viet um, has been in existence um, in the New Orleans area for the last 14 years and we serve the community um, in the greater New Orleans and all over um, Louisiana, um, in home area, um, Terra Bones area, those areas, especially during disasters or after disaster. Um, since we started, um, the, the VITA role that we play in the community is to connect the services. Mm -hmm. And through working in the community, identifying the missing link, even though that there are translator lines, but it's the interaction and working with the community and the cultures, and sometimes it's just the language level of understanding the services or what's available um, to be able to um, to get those services. And 211, um, we, we identified that's going to be a resource for the community because it's not just a crisis line, it's a referral line where people can call it in. But then for to be comfortable enough to speak to someone on the other sure. line that speaks the language and understand the culture here uh, within our, our, um, our greater New Orleans region. Yes. And I think one of the reasons, too, that it was chosen to, to go with the Vietnam or Vietnamese translator mm -hmm. first was because, although, again, APAS, Asian Pacific American Society, encompasses many many different folks from different regions of Asia, everything from Malaysia to India yes. to Vietnam. I think we have some from Thailand, a, a group, a, an amalgamation of a number of cultures and people. Vietnamese culture is by far 
the largest and has been here, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. the longest. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this year will mark our 40th um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, anniversary, uh, com- commemoration for um, since we left um, 75, and that's something that we can uh, discuss later on another <laughs> on another day for another event. But um, definitely, and um, I, I just want to share too in terms of the crisis and all the resources. Um, recently, uh, besides all the programs that Viet has been um, uh, providing for the community. Um, as of October, we receive a funding from the Department of Justice um, through the Office of Violence Against Women um, to provide um, domestic violence um, resource. There are resources, there are organizations that are providing the shelters, all the resources for uh, the victims. But um, connecting these resources to the community has been a challenge because of the language, because of the culture. So through this, Via Link uh, will be that supportive um, in in regards to getting um, the services out to the community for even for, for people just to call in to get to be able to connect to the services that that is needed yes. and that is so important and that's been something that the United Way of Southeast Louisiana is the public policy I think of Kim Sport our public policy chair Charmaine Cassiope who is our chief operating officer what advocates they have been and worked so long and hard along with another broad coalition across the state to bring domestic violence, the awareness Definitely. of the situation mm-hmm. to the legislature and with the help from a number of local state legislators, including uh, Helena Moreno and others, we're able to get a package of bills passed, the strongest ever in, in getting new laws and enforcing those that are already in the book because it's just, it, it's, it's become a national tragedy and very much a local one of domestic violence in the family. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Now, I know that we were talking about the the lack of, of, again, the resources, but it is that communication. And I do want to drill down just a little bit, Lang, because, again, yes, 40 years, and the Vietnamese culture is strong, it is thriving. How you've come back post-Katrina is absolutely amazing. But there is that, um, I've read sometimes that it takes two or three or more generations before people feel that they're truly assimilated. Is that what you found within the Um, Vietnamese community? um, Yes, yes. Um, With the Vietnamese, um, we're very very resilient, especially, you know, with the older generations. There have been, during 1954, they have to, you know, leave the north to the the south, and again, 75, and with the disaster, it's just more resilience, and uh, with with the community as, as together, you know, migrating from you know Vietnam to here has put that in perspective for us and uh, you know with 40 years here we want to at least for our younger generation to know the cultures where they are uh, where what what brings them here so with that I think it's a it's very important um, aspect of you know for us um, yes well I want to talk about more about two and one in the correlation mm-hmm. but you just gave me something that is a natural segue <laughs> lang because not only has uh apas and the board of directors yes. as you pointed out through united way and then this partnership with via link for the grant for translators for for the crisis line and more well it, it, it turns out apas again tina owen is the president she and the board of directors have also come through and what they've done is they put together uh, another grant that they have given and we in turn United Way are giving out these smaller grants to the different people Mm -hmm. because we want these different cultures to be known and it is about this exchange of information about history about music food everything and this is going on right now and the APAS well let's see I think I think it closed well it closed but it's still it's Mm -hmm. it's ongoing Mm -hmm. and that we're going Mm -hmm. to hear more about the celebrations and everything coming up absolutely and what really Mm -hmm. is surprising APAS is the umbrella organization, we mentioned many cultures, 16 Asian and Pacific Island communities in the greater New Orleans area. But again, the Vietnamese community is the largest. And I'm wondering, yes. do you have an idea of, of, of population there? Oh, well, I guess based on the, the, the little census that we were digging up, uh, as far as the Vietnamese um, in the greater New Orleans here, it's about 6,000, I would say. And then in the West Bank, it's about another five to 6,000. So you're talking about just uh, west and the east, you're talking about close to 12,000 Vietnamese um, residents. And as here. you said, you have populations is, down in the other parishes as well. Yes, yes, down into Plaquemines Parish. Parish, home, uh, and as far as the Vietnamese community, we're the most saturated uh, Vietnamese community here in the United States. 
And as you was talking about celebrations, um, next week is Vietnamese, a uh, Chinese New Year, Vietnamese New Year. We're going to have a big celebration. Um, it's going to be at Mary Queen of Vietnam Church. So <laughs> <laughs> but this is a chance. It's not just get, um, getting the Vietnamese out, but the American uh, nationalities um, come out to our uh, parish to celebrate um, this great New Year's with us. And, and I would take this opportunity to invite all of you out, too. <laughs> well, that's it. As you said, there's 16 different. I know I've had the pleasure of meeting Paul. Sohi and others, and he's with IANA, which is the Indian American New Orleans Association, I believe. Same thing, large communities there. And so many of us, we walk outside our door, we get in the car, we wave to people, we might know our neighbors, but we don't know all this rich, right. sure. rich history. Sure. And I mean, touching base on what you were saying with that and kind of going back to that, that grant opportunity that was just offered with um, APAS is... I and mean, that's something that they were really trying to highlight was that rich, mm-hmm. deep culture of the community. And they were offering nine twenty five hundred dollar cultural awareness grants to promote cultural product projects that celebrate the rich heritage and promote knowledge of the Asian and Pacific Island community. So, I mean, that in itself is huge that we're just really trying to to keep that culture and really learn, you know, how to form those relationships amongst each other. And that's where it kind of goes back round robin here Mm -hmm. to to Lavandra because, again, the saturation of population, primarily Vietnamese, but that all these others are here. It just, again, shows the need and how important 211 is in getting the word out to everyone. Right. Um, Right now, only about 1% of our callers are from the Vietnamese community. So we're really with this with this grant opportunity, we want to greatly increase that. We do um, have a fairly large percentage of Hispanic callers uh, in our community, but we know that there's that large contingency that is not calling us. And um, this initiative, everybody's in training right now, just so you know. Um, There is about 60 hours each individual has to do of training, and we plan to uh, launch this with them actively taking calls in the call center about mid-March. There will be an advertising campaign launching very quickly, and um, as we start, our um, initial program is going to offer this service Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and, and that's important to note, and I know that that is lying kind of a role you'll have, too, because you're trying to get the word out to your communities, which when you say 1%, no, that's not very much. And yet we know with this large population mm-hmm. there is that mm-hmm. need for sure. information and referral. As you said, it, for mm-hmm. your program, which you had up. Um, yes, because, uh, uh, Terry, as far as for um, services, they're calling our office, and then there are other nonprofits that we're serving the community. But that's just in the Orleans area. There are other, in the other parishes that are not able to um, get that services. So with the 211, at least um, give them a chance to call it in, knowing where all the resources are, and especially, you know, with counseling. Mm-hmm. Um, counseling, it's still uh, a new thing for the Vietnamese community or the Asian community in terms of, you know, when you deal with talking to somebody about your mental state of mind or any issues that you have, this is still new. So this will be something that we can um, educate the community, use it as a resource. Even in the past, we tell them to call in 211, but the challenge is that where do you go from there? So that is mm-hmm. something that we're going to mm-hmm. have to discuss internally also to how do we connect that service to and not just giving you, here's the number, you know, just like right. a, a, an, an American call would call it in. Right. So we would have to walk them through it or stay on the line because the interpreting would be, it's important now that we are connecting with them as a, as a first uh, line of offense and how are we going to move to the next phase and not just let you off so it's like a hands-on so that's something it's going to be a challenge for us to work with that (laughs) so um hopefully but then it's the wonderful thing that we have funding to be able to start this initiative Mm -hmm. and then going forward Mm -hmm. um looking for additional donations and sponsorships um, to be able to take this um to the next level and providing additional um translation services um in other languages well i think it's very important too because we talk about uh, United Way. It has always been uh, one of our great missions to make sure that we can build capacity. We talk mm-hmm. about for independence and self-sufficiency. And I think many people, but especially I see it within the Asian community as a culture overall, that very broad spectrum, uh, secular, 
very independent and always taking care of each other, it's maybe even more difficult mm -hmm. to reach out to someone else. Yes, yes, you're, you're right, Terry. And uh, after Katrina and after the oil spill, we have seen it all. And a lot of them still have within them that it's, you know, it's it's nothing to talk about. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge that we still work with the community through the services that we're providing. And I know in the past we have um, provided um, take, um, professionals, you know, that speaks uh, our language from another area to come here to provide that services, but it's still a, a cultural um, sensitive issue um, to discuss or and, even talked about. And good um, question. When you said that, just made me think of something. There are different dialects. Yes. How do you deal? And I see LaVondra <laughs> shaking right, her head. Right. Well, <laughs> How do you deal with that? Is it really? And again, I wish I could speak every language in the world. I'm not sure if I have a dialect of American English or not. But And, and that it, was actually part of the interview it, process oh, to make okay. sure you had the appropriate dialect that would um, serve the majority of the people. And how, may I ask, because I find it interesting, how does it differ in, in, um, in, in translation? Uh, well, words as, or as just as, an accent? Or? As far as for um, just different words that would be used in different regions. Uh, but now, as, as far as for me, when I first came here, I, I live from the central um, region in Vietnam, and then there's north and the south. So now that we're all living in one community, we do have to learn each other culture. Right. And living here for so long, you know, with the children growing up, they're kind of having that mixed um, culture themselves so um, yes but that's that's an important component to understand so uh, but then the the other the, the important culture is like for for people just to share just to um, to get out of that circle and be able to depend on others for services and that's what important once they realize the important the needs of it um, I think um, in terms of the dialect um, we can always you know work around it and uh, <laughs> and provide the, the necessary you know need that is um, for, uh, yeah that is needed see, the big issue again is yes. just getting them yes, to know about two and one and yes. use it right. and, and, right. and, and Jamie I want to come back because I know you've got some needs but LaVonda quickly when you're talking about that one percent do you have a breakdown of the needs or services that the Vietnamese or Asian community is requesting? Well, it's it's they pretty much track with the okay. general public. The same needs, thing. So right. it would be utilities mm -hmm. and food. Utilities and, and food. Very little for counseling, though. Okay. And again, that's something we're overcoming. That's, over a, that's <laughs> right. That's a that's a challenge, and and that's a cultural thing we've got to address. And I, I guess another thing we've discovered in our training, and this is it's really good for Via Link as, as we try to increase our cultural competency, is Part of the exercise is learning feeling words so that you're, as counseling and working with a caller, you can identify those feelings and reflect those back to them. Well, some of the feeling words that we have don't exist. In ah, the they don't, there is not a translation that, there's not for a translation. them. Oh. So there's had to be a dialogue in how we address that and what words we yes, used. yes. Well, like I said, as far as for overall, the counseling aspect is, is still new to us. I mean, mm -hmm. even within my field, I do social service, but not on the counseling side. So it's it's going to be um, something that uh, a lot of these individuals will have to take into account for the, um, for that services. And even the, with the services that we're providing on the social sides, um, it's going to help for us to kind of um, sit and train and give the guidance um, to these individuals so that way they can help them. It's easier when you help face-to-face -face when they come to your office, but this is like through the phone line so that way for them to provide whatever the resources that is there um, to be able to help them. And I think that's the important. So that way for people yeah. just to start. The anonymity yeah. of it sometimes. Right. Maybe right. the confidentiality mm -hmm. yes. will make some people yes. reach out that wouldn't have normally re re reached out. Yes. And I mean, from the United Way standpoint, we're we're really excited about this partnership with Via Link Two One One and and Viet to just really try to increase those calls. We're going to be doing a, a huge marketing push and trying to get the word out there, so so this community knows that they can call and access these resources, you know, through Viet and through through Via Link Two One One. So hopefully, we can really increase those calls and and form a, a great partnership beyond this pilot, this uh, initial pilot launch. Oh, sure, because we do. We all want to grow together. And mm -hmm. again, in, in reading and some of the things that are coming up, and I think Lang and Lavander, you probably, again, know more about this than I do, but there have been some articles already appearing about with the the 10th anniversary of Katrina coming up in August. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, we every year we kind of count down, you know, our, our own personal and local history change forever. But I think we tried 
to get it past us. But I think because there's going to be so much national, perhaps even international focus on this 10th anniversary, that I've been reading that Summer Ward is going to kind of pull that Band-Aid off and that some people are going to perhaps be in, in greater need of talking to someone, of counseling yes. services yes. as those memories rush back and those hardships and those dark days are relived. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I think that's important because, you know, in, in trying to, we, so we have to get our feelings out and talk about the issues and pass it. It's still in there, but you got to talk about it. And we, when we don't talk about it, it's in, it's in our mind, it's in our heart, and it's just, you know, taking more, um, I, I guess, in terms of mental, uh, because that's what we've seen after Katrina. It's like from our um, elder generation is going from, you know, one to the next. So for them, it's like, you know, it's just in them. But then if you give them a chance to really sit and talk about it, it's a never ending story because, you know, somebody is listen. So we, but it's, psych, it's a cycle that we have to break and uh, bring that into the community that this is, this is a process. So um, hopefully through the 211, um, billing 211, uh, we can take that to the next level and give the, the people the opportunity just to call in and kind of uh, talk about their feelings and um, just to get it out and see the, the relief that is going to, um, to provide for them. Um, mm -hmm. just to have someone listen on the other side. Sure. Yes. Lavandra, you provide a very big and important service. You know Agreed. that. Agreed. We're happy to do that. <laughs> Thanks to the United Way for helping us do that. And but, I'm, just to kind of reiterate the timeline on this, though, Lavandra, when again were, were these counselors don't have, going to be live and, and ready right. to go? We don't have an exact date right now. That it will be determined once all the trainings finish. But they're in training but right now. They're in training right now. Um, our goal is mid-March. Great. Great. And it'll be a Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So those counselors will, will be there on, on, on the, the phones. line. Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, we want to thank the, the folks at APAS, and that is the Asian Pacific American Society, because their board of directors, what they did is they, they gave a $64,000 grant to United Way so we could all partner with Via Link to one one and make this service available and have the translator training and to have all the things that will help that community. And again, their generosity, it extends to the grants that we have been giving out that they've all been evaluated now, but this will help to build cultural awareness, help in the celebrations that we know are coming up within the uh, Asian society. We have, what, Vietnamese, the 40th anniversary. Yes. We talked about, we've got the Chinese New Year. There are so many things that are going on, and it just makes us all understand that as we have rebuilt our own lives and our communities, we are one. We can all come together. We will all come together, and that's how we're going to grow and make this a stronger and better greater New Orleans area and southeast Louisiana. And I think that's something that we can all, all be very happy about. Agreed. I tell you what, if we can take the show out, please, mm -hmm. Lang Lee, again with VIT, explain one more time what it stands for and perhaps a number other than the 211 if you want someone <laughs> to uh, call or get more information. Yes, uh, Vietnamese. Uh, VIT stands for Vietnamese Initiatives and Economic Training, and our phone number is 504 Two five five zero four zero zero. Thank you, Terry. And Lavandra, uh, we love the two one one, but there are some other numbers too. <laughs> sure. Other than um, two one one, you can uh, if for some reason you can't get through two one one, the the direct dial number would be eight hundred seven four nine two six seven three. If you're in crisis, the direct dial number would be eight hundred two seven three talk. And that's what it's all about. Let's talk. We talk here. We want others to talk. Feel good about yourselves. Don't fear asking someone for assistance now and then. And Jamie, anything you want to add? No, I mean, I love what you just said, though. Don't fear asking for assistance and don't fear asking just for information and, and the referrals. I mean, it's not just a counseling line. It's not just for crisis. I mean, you can call, get information about what's going on in the community, about any sort of resources that you need. So I think that's important to reiterate that. And it's true. And whoops, one last quick, <laughs> oh, yes, quick I wanna, comment line. I want to reiterate um, the VITA. The VITA. So you can call 211 to mm -hmm. get connected to the VITA. It's a volunteer yes. income tax assistant. It's free of charge. Mm -hmm. So please utilize that. Definitely. And you'll also have some translation or translation. Well, actually, there, no? VIT is one of the sites ah, for the VITA. Yes. So it all comes together. <laughs> 
getting lots of calls. <laughs> yes. Ladies, and we have another program coming up about that. So see, it's all about the talk. No, thank you very much. <laughs> Lavandra Dobbs, who's the CEO of Via Link. We also have the lovely Langley, who is a program director of the domestic violence program for Viet, and my friend and colleague, Jamie Birchfield, who's the marketing director at United Way of Southeast Louisiana. And for United Way, I'm Terry Westerfield. Ladies, join me. Live United. United.